So this did not turn out too well, huh? Yo, so today what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about the two anti-graffiti coatings that I have in my studio. One is a sacrificial anti-graffiti coating, meaning that it comes off the wall and you have to sort of put it back on every time you repair the wall or power wash it. And the other is non-sacrificial, meaning that it is permanently on the wall. And I'm gonna do this by testing out both of these on one piece of canvas and I'm gonna split it apart by having one covered with the sacrificial and the other with the non-sacrificial. So like this orange sun with the blue background, this will be covered with the sacrificial um, anti-graffiti coating and the other is going to be covered by the Sherwin-Williams uh, non-sacrificial anti-graffiti coating that I use all the time. And I use them differently mainly because as a mural artist, when you're doing work on a structure or a wall, you don't have sometimes the best equipment to maintain it. So if someone tags your wall, you don't have access to a power sprayer all the time. And the sort of anti-graffiti wipes that they sell at Home Depot or some of these stores are really just trash. So I like to use the world's best uh, graffiti remover and that gets rid of any paint. So it could be spray paint, it could be latex, but it breaks down all sorts of paint and gets rid of it. So right now we're gonna cover this blue one with the sacrificial anti-graffiti coating. And what that means is that it provides a thin layer, but every time you clean the wall or power wash it, that thin layer is removed and then you have to redo it or re-coat it again. And then this Sherwin-Williams anti-graffiti coating is a non-sacrificial, meaning that every time you clean the wall or power wash the wall, the coating will stay on there. So that means you don't have to re-coat it with the anti-graffiti coating, even if you power wash it or use a lot of solvent on it to break down the different paints. And after I let it dry for a day or two, I basically took spray paint and painted on top of it as if I was sort of tagging a mirror or just making a ton of marks. And I let that dry for a day and then took it to the roof, used the world's best graffiti remover to pour that on the canvas and just start rubbing that in. And the more I rub, the more you can kind of see the graffiti remover is agitating the paint that I put on top and basically removing it little by little. And I do it for both sides. Typically, you would want a power washer. Like I said, as an artist, as a, sort of someone that works in different areas, you don't have access to a power washer all the time. And you don't have access to you know, a water source for that power washer. So a lot of times I'm forced to basically just use solvents and you know, like, like I said it earlier in the video, those spray bottles or pesticide sprayers that have low pressure, but it's easy to carry around. It's easy for me to sort of just throw that in the back of my car and just use that. So the anti-graffiti coating that I use, I have to make sure I account for that as well. So something that is able to allow me to use you know, some really toxic and sort of hard solvents that will break down the paint, but also make it easy enough for me to uh, sort of remove any markings on the wall that I need to. And you can kind of see the anti-graffiti remover definitely broke down a lot of that paint and allows me to just use this pesticide sprayer to sort of wash a lot of that paint away really easy. But the thing is, with the sacrificial anti-graffiti coating, the coating is broken down, but then I'm still rubbing it in, trying to get some of the markings. So I'm also hitting the painting underneath, and that solvent is actually affecting the painting underneath as well. So that is one of the reasons why I try to stay away from the sacrificial uh, graffiti coatings if I don't have consistent access to a power washer because if I had a power washer, it would be easy for me to just remove the graffiti on top of whatever mural that I coated uh, without using a lot of the solvents because the entire layer on top of it would just, you know, just wash away. And you can kind of see some of that white of the canvas sort of showing through. But if you look on the other side on this permanent graffiti uh, coating from Sherman Williams, it's a silicone based sort of coating. It's pretty much staying intact. It's not going anywhere. And it's allowing me to use that graffiti remover to break down the solvents and spray it away without hitting the actual paint underneath that we're trying to protect. 
and all I'm doing is just really going back and forth with that solvent and with this pesticide sprayer full of water and I'm just washing it away. So you can kind of see exactly what this sacrificial anti graffiti coating does versus the non-sacrificial. And this is important because, like I said, I have limited equipment in terms of I don't have a power washer, I don't have access to water at every mural that I do, so I need something that allows me to clean the wall with limited equipment. I even went back and did another uh, round of throwing some of this spray paint on top of the non-sacrificial uh, coating from Sherwin Williams just to see, you know, if I do it again, you know, will it stand? up to another round of you know cleaning and all I did was just pour on that graffiti remover solvent on again and basically agitated the spray paint on top of it and did it even more but the more you rub around the more you can kind of start to see how it really just breaks down uh, any type of paint NPS this is really toxic material that can get on you so make sure you wear gloves all the time and sort of eye protection as well because you don't want this thing splashing in your eye too uh, but I'll have this product in the description it's actually the same company that makes the sacrificial anti graffiti coating so they make a ton of products that can help you preserve your murals they're based in LA it's called mural shield I think it's muralshield.com so if you go there, you're able to see a ton of their different products that they have. I just didn't see the non-sacrificial coating. They only had the sacrificial one, which is great if you have access to a power washer or sprayer, but I don't, and I don't have access to a consistent water source at every mural that I use. So this product, I guess the sacrificial one is more for companies that have those big trucks that, you know, basically you can drive around with thousands of gallons of water and use that to sort of clean up uh, some of the walls and everything. But uh, as a small muralist, basically I have to rely on just, you know, a uh, pesticide sprayer, you know, maybe a couple of gallons, five gallon buckets of water and solvents to sort of repair a lot of my murals that, you know, may get tagged or damaged. So like I said, I will have the different products in the description, but you can kind of see exactly the difference between the sacrificial and non-sacrificial. Like I said, if you have limited equipment, then the permanent you know, anti-graffiti coating that's non-sacrificial uh, works well. But if you have access to you know, a lot of equipment, the non-sacrificial one works out as well. Again, hopefully this video helped out in terms of you know what this product does and how it can be used in your practice. So definitely try it out and I will see you next time. Peace.